the Lord. It is so good to be found here once again, just so that we can continue to walk and expand uh, the kingdom of God, that we may even defend the kingdom of God, even as sons. It's so very important for us to understand that we are here on purpose. I need every one of you who actually are tuning in on today. I want you to know that you've been sent here on assignment more than looking at it like you just happen to go to a particular job you happen to be in a particular family you happen to have children you happen to have parents you need to begin to understand on the contrary that you've been sent here for that reason you've been sent to that job <clears throat> those people were sent to you and you were sent to them in order for us to understand and recognize this, we have to understand that there is such significance in the overall design of this world that we live in. The Bible says that even the Lord Jesus himself, the Bible says it was from him that the worlds were created and framed by the word of his power. Everything that we know and see right now is manifested as a result of his power and his glory lord god i just thank you right now lord god for this moment that you allow us to to tune in right now lord god and to even broadcast lord god we make it our purpose right now lord god that we may forever live in your image lord god on purpose in jesus name i'm so glad that every one of you have actually this we have a couple of things to talk about because a lot of times when we're dealing with life, we begin to see that there is so many different things that play a part in the selection process. A lot of times there's various things that may come up that are in your that fall in your line of vision. And you get a chance to select which one you want to use. Um, as a matter of fact, even with this candidacy and even with with uh, President Trump. Uh, getting ready to take office. We understand that we use this word generally a lot of times president elect or elect to the elect lady of the house to elect man of the house. Even in Christendom, even in the kingdom, we say whether or not somebody is an elder elect or pastor elect. What that word elect means is that you've actually been chosen. I want every one of you who are listening right now say I've been chosen. Yeah, you might not like some of the things that you were chosen for, but I want you to know you were chosen. You may not even like some of the things that you're going through but it wasn't so much that you were chose for those things but those things were chosen for you God says that he's going to cause you to triumph in all things even through Christ Jesus praise the Lord so let's just think about that for a moment think about how there's such a selection process don't you know even when you get a chance I remember one time I was going to uh, school and I felt like I had a little skill playing basketball like I remember trying to go out for the team and guess what I was not selected I make no mistake or no qualms with that and you know what it was a little embarrassing because I figured I had a J man I feel like I had a nice little shot but you know what for whatever reason I wasn't chosen for that I need you to understand that part of your process, part of you developing, knowing who you are in the things of God is being able to understand that there's certain things that you were chosen for, but then there's certain things that were not chosen for you. You have to understand that if you're fighting to be seen, sometimes God's purpose is to keep you hidden for a season. Praise the Lord. Don't you know that sometimes somebody who's trying to get their attention, God was saying, no, not is not the time. No, it's not my purpose for you right now. Don't you know some of the things that we wish we could have put our hands on, that it was by purpose and design that we did not receive some of those things. See, some of the stuff you would not get a chance to learn until you pass some things up and then you get a chance to look back. Because y'all know how we say in the world a lot of times that hindsight is 2020. What does that mean? That means that it's not until after you've gone through some things you get a chance to reflect and realize, wait a minute, I really wasn't prepared for that. My son just told me just the other day, he said, Dad, I realized that even when I first started driving, he said there were certain things about me that I just wasn't mature yet. Can you actually acknowledge and say that there were certain things that you were not ready for? Certain things that you had not been prepared for? Praise the Lord. The Lord says many were called. 
but only few have been chosen. And that's what I want to just talk to you all today for a little bit on that one word chosen 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 that's a special word that's that carries so much significance you were chosen for this work you were chosen for this assignment that person was chosen for you the word says that the Lord Jesus walked up to some of those disciples before they actually became disciples and he said, follow me. In other words, you've been chosen. Have you gotten that revelation yet to know that you've been chosen? To know what you've been chosen for? Don't you know in order for you to understand your purpose? And to get the enlightenment on what it is to, to await. That's what many of us are right now. We're awaiting the illumination. Where the light comes on. It's one thing to say that you see a light at the end of the tunnel. But when the light surrounds you. You can say this room at this time has been illuminated. Now I can see what's going on around me. It's not about just seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. But now I'm surrounded by light. Hallelujah. Because now my understanding has come to a place where it was not previously. You have to understand that when you've been chosen. It's important for you to understand what is the purpose what is the understanding? What is the illumination? What is the purpose of all this for? There is a greater purpose other than what you felt like you recognized at the beginning or at the offset. The Bible says we see in part, we even prophesy in part. But when he comes, hallelujah, the Bible says when the perfect comes, that which is imperfect will be done away with. Sometimes you have to know what you have just to realize it wasn't perfect. It wasn't the right one. You don't even know how to appreciate what you have. Except you had experience with some of the things you had previously. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that just with understanding and I want every one of us to begin to really focus on and begin to tell yourself I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I was chosen for this. I'm chosen at this very point, at this very moment. When you're walking into that job interview, you got to be able to say, I'm chosen for this. I'm chosen for this experience. Even if it does not work to the place where you thought or where you expected, you were still chosen for that moment. Just begin to tell yourself, I'm chosen for this. I was chosen for this. Praise the Lord. Look at what the word says in Matthew 20. And verse number 16, praise the Lord. The word says in Matthew 20, verse number 16, it says, So the last shall be first. Think about that. He says, The last shall be first. Those that made up the end, if you would, those that appeared to fall behind. He says, the last shall become first. You must understand and be prepared that there's a shifting that's taking place. Don't you know that if you stay ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. I'm going to say that one more time. If you stay ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. The Bible says the last shall be first. So just because you feel like you're in the back, you better begin to develop and have the mindset to know that where I am, I will not remain. This is not a permanent place for me. I'm still on the move. You got to be able to know and understand because you have been ordered by God. The Bible says you are blessed, hallelujah, above all the nations of the world. Just as you receive the gospel of the kingdom, you must understand and know that you've been chosen for this. The Bible says, Jesus said, what shall I say for these things? 
What should I say to these things? Should I say, Father, deliver me from this hour? Should I say, Lord, save me from this? He said, no, but for this purpose have I come. I was chosen for this. I was chosen for this. All of the experiment, all of the experience that you've had, what good is it to, to have a child you spend money on training. You spend money on practice. You spend money on equipment. You spend money on gear. Praise the Lord. And when it's time to perform, that child says, I don't want to do this. You know what? If you're a parent like me, you say, oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't spend some. Oh, yeah, you are prepared. Yeah, you, you just having a little bit of uh, a temporary mental uh, lapse right now. But you better believe. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, you prepared for this. Because my money helped prepare you for this. My time helped prepare you for this. Sometimes you have to put help. I don't want to say push, but you know what? You got to push people sometime and help them to understand. Because when you come to the place where God has called you, sometimes the very place where you experience the most rejection is the place where you're going to make the most impact, have the most significance. Hallelujah. Just begin to tell yourself again. Say, I was chosen for this. I was chosen for this. So the word says, God says, I'm preparing you. He says, the last shall be first. Hallelujah. And then those who are first, go ahead and get your shine on. Hallelujah. Go ahead and enjoy your moment. Because God says, and the first shall be last praise the lord go ahead tell somebody go ahead get your shine on it's your time get your shine on but you know what my time is coming hallelujah my time is coming and the lord is raising me and you know what this might be the hour this might be the purpose are you making yourself ready if the very thing that you've been longing for happens are you really in and an, are you really in expectation are you thoroughly anticipating? Because guess what? If you stay ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. Praise the Lord. So look what the word says. He says, the last shall be first and the first last. And look at he says, for many will be called. Many are called, but only few are chosen hallelujah only few are chosen don't you know that when it comes down to recognizing that you've been chosen for a particular purpose don't you know when it comes down to danger everyone can see danger everyone can recognize it but those who are chosen have a way of saying I'm not going to allow what I see to stop me isn't it amazing when you think about even those people according to Hebrews 11 how the Bible makes mention of those who walked by faith a lot of people you know now and now and to now this day and time you have so many people saying I got faith I got crazy faith but don't you know that the type of faith that you have has to always be coupled with actions it's not good enough just to say that you have faith Something that you got to do as a result of what you believe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says it's not just the hearers of the word that are just. But it's the doers of the word that are just. So guess what? I need you to understand everyone else sees the danger. The sent ones. I'm talking about those who've been chosen. Just go ahead and tell yourself again. Say, I've been chosen for this. I've been chosen for this. Everyone else sees the danger. But the sent ones or the chosen ones, they see the promises of God. They see the promises of God. Do you see the promises of God? Do you see the promises? Or do you see your conditions? Or do you see your circumstances? Do you feel locked? Do you feel held down? Do you feel held back? 
Begin to ask the Lord to help you to see his promises. The Bible says that the promises of the Lord, they are yes and they are amen. Like in other words, those promises are not about to be attracted. Those promises are not about to make a U-turn. Those promises are not shut doors. Those promises are the open doors. These are the things that the Lord says, I've given you access. I've granted access to you. And you've got to know this. See, once a believer holds on to a promise of God, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that will keep you from walking into that door. That's why the Apostle Paul says, for I am persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Are you persuaded to hold on to the promises of God? Hallelujah. I am persuaded. The Bible says the last shall be first. The first be shall be last. And many are called. But few are chosen. Everyone else can see the danger. But the sent ones see the promises of God. And they see the promises of God as absolute truth. Absolute. Absolute. What God has to say to me personally, it settles it. What God has said according to his word. When he speaks to me in my spirit. I'm constantly, Lord, this is a prayer that I even would develop even more. So, Lord, whatever it is I don't see, if you're expecting me to see it, Lord God, open my eyes. Hallelujah. Open my eyes. Help me to see what it is that you desire to reveal unto me. Because everyone else sees the danger. But those who've been chosen by God, they see the promises of the word of God and they see those promises as absolute truth praise the Lord let's go to another scripture because we're talking about those who are chosen you know you're chosen you know that you're chosen this is the hour and this is the time praise the Lord this is the hour and this is the time. If you would look, turn if you would. If you have your Bible, turn if you would to 1 Peter chapter number 2. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Siete ocho nueve. Hallelujah. Verse number 9. If you look at verse number nine, the word says, but you are a chosen generation. Hallelujah. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we're talking about those who've been chosen. You should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, this, this is what I'm talking about. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, out of darkness, I'm on my way out of darkness. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. But once I come into the light, hallelujah, the Bible says I must make manifest of everything that is light. Hallelujah. I have, I have to understand constantly that I've been chosen for this. I've been chosen for this. So now I must make my due diligence to study, to show myself approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed. But I rightfully divide the word of truth. The Bible says wisdom is found in the multitude of counsel. I'm telling you, there's times that I love to be able to seek the word of the Lord 
when I go to the Lord personally, but I cannot lie to you. I also love when I have genuine brothers, genuine sisters, genuine women of God, genuine men of God, and we get a chance to talk about the word of God. We talk about dealing with revelation. I don't know about you, but I come to a place where I love the Lord so much. There's nothing like his revelation. If the word of God, the living word is God, then the breath of God, hallelujah, is revelation, hallelujah. If the living word is God himself, the living word, not the, not the written word, not the Logos, but the living word, if the living word is God himself, then that means the revelation, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, the revelation of the word of God, is the breath of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says God formed man. He formed him from the dust of the ground. But he breathed into him. And then man became a living soul. Begin to ask the Lord to give you revelation, understanding, illumination of his most holy word. And trust me, it's going to cause you to begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness like never before. You are chosen for this. If this is making sense to you, hallelujah, acknowledge it. I can remember so many times where I said, Lord, I shouldn't be doing this. You know why? Because I felt chosen by God. I felt chosen. I felt chosen by him. Let me share just a couple of things with you real quick. I felt chosen by God. See, everyone else sees the danger. But sent ones see disappointing the father. Disappointing the father. Don't you know when you have someone in your life that you esteem highly? It should matter how they see you. I'm not talking about Jim, Sally, and Sue. But I'm talking about those who you esteem highly. It should matter how they see you. Believe it or not, I esteem the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. It matters to me how he sees me, so that means... I want to do everything I can to not disappoint my father. Hallelujah. See, this is the cry of sons and daughters. When we understand that we've been chosen by God, it's a specific purpose that we must fulfill. It's not about just living. It's about a fulfilled purpose. I read the other day on Facebook that someone said, I don't want to die with more dreams than memories. Hallelujah. That was powerful to me. Because if you die with dreams. That means you never got a chance to fulfill those things. Because it just was a dream. But if you have memories. Hallelujah. That means that you've had some experiences. Hallelujah. God give me more memories with you Lord God. You've done so many things Lord God. I'm open, Lord God, for more memories with you because I know that you are a good father in the name of Jesus. And I don't want to disappoint you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something else that chosen, those who are chosen, those who are sent, because guess what? Everybody else sees the danger. The sent ones are the chosen ones. They see the promises of God. The sent ones are the chosen ones. They see disappointing their father. They see disappointing those who they esteem highly. Hallelujah. And one more thing I want you to know. If you've been chosen by God and you've been sent by God, not only do you see, hallelujah, not only do you see the promises of God as being real, not only do you see disappointing the father, but you also sense and you see 
unusual peace. Hallelujah. The peace that surpasses all understanding. You have so many reasons to stop. You have so many reasons to give up. But yet you still have a stronger peace that says, don't give up yet. Today that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew in strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They experience unusual peace that is contrary to the circumstances. And then the last thing that they experience they can actually see victory, not just instead of defeat, but they see victory through defeat. Let me just encourage you on today. You need to be reminded that you've been chosen by God. Just as we, as we end this telecast, just begin to say, I am chosen. I've been chosen. Regardless of what your circumstances are saying. Take that stance and decree you are chosen. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We want to just encourage you. Please give us some feedback. Let us know whether or not this is something that's actually encouraging you. I want to just encourage you one more time. Just as we know to do. Thank you one more time for tuning in to living in his image on purpose. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. Amen. Hallelujah.